Chapter 8. What happened after dinner. And now, said Lucy, do please tell us what's happened to Mr Tumnus. Oh, that's bad, said Mr Beaver, shaking his head. That's a very, very bad business. There's no doubt he was taken off by the police. I got that from a bird who saw it done. But where's he been taken to? asked Lucy. Well, they were heading northwards when they were last seen, and we all know what that means. No, we don't, said Susan. Mr Beaver shook his head in a very gloomy fashion. I'm afraid it means they were taking him to her house, he said. But what will they do to him, Mr Beaver, gasped Lucy. Well, said Mr Beaver, you can't be exactly sure. Uh, there's not many taken in there that's ever comes out again. Statues. All full of statues, they say it is. In the courtyard and up the stairs and in the hall. People she's turned, he paused and shuddered, into stone. But, Mr Beaver, said Lucy, can't we, I mean, we must do something to save him. It's too dreadful and it's all on my account. I don't doubt you'd save him if you could, dearie, said Mrs Beaver, but you've no chance of getting into that house against her will and ever coming out alive. Couldn't we have some stratagem, said Peter. I mean, couldn't we dress up as something or, or pretend to be, oh, peddlers or anything or, or watch till she was gone out or, or hang it all, there must be some way. This fawn saved my sister at his own risk, Mr Beaver. We can't just leave him to, to be, to have that done to him. It's no good, son of Adam, said Mr Beaver. No good you're trying, of all people. But now that Aslan is on the move... Oh, yeah, tell us about Aslan, said several voices at once. For once again, that strange feeling, like, like the first signs of spring, like good news, had come all over them. Who is Aslan? asked Susan. Aslan, said Mr Beaver. Why, don't you know? He's the king. He's the lord of the whole wood. But not often here, you understand, never in my time or my father's time, but, but word has reached us that he has come back. He's in Narnia at this moment. He'll settle the White Queen, all right. If it's, not, it's he, not you, that will save Mr Tomnus. She won't turn him into stone too, said Edmund. <laughs> Lord love you, son of Adam. What a simple thing to say, answered Mr Beaver with a great laugh. Turn him into stone. If she can stand on her two feet and look him in the face, it'll be the most she can do and more than I expect of her. No, no. No, he'll put it all to rights, as it says in the old rhyme in these parts. Wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight. At the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bares his teeth, winter meets its death. And when he shakes his mane, we'll have spring again. You'll understand when you see him. But shall we see him, asked Susan. Oh, why, daughter of Eve, that's why I brought you here for. I'm to lead you to where you shall meet him, said Mr Beaver. Is he a man? asked Lucy. Aslan? A man? said Mr Beaver sternly. Certainly not. I tell you, he's the king of the wood, the son of the great emperor beyond the sea. Don't you know who the king of the beasts Aslan is a lion, the lion, the great lion. Oh, said Susan, I had thought he was a man. Is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. That you will, dearie, and no mistake, said Mrs Beaver. If there's anyone who can appear before Aslan without their knees knocking, they're either braver than most or else just silly. Then he isn't safe, said Lucy. Safe? said Mr Beaver. Don't you hear what Mrs Beaver tells you? Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. He's the king, I tell you. I'm longing to see him, said Peter, even if I do feel frightened when it comes to the point. That's right, son of Adam, bringing his paw down on the table with a crash that made all the cups and saucers rattle. And so you shall. Word has been sent that you are to meet him tomorrow, if you can, at the stone table. Where's that? 
said Lucy. I'll show you, said Mr Beaver. It's down the river, a good step from here. I'll take you to it. But in the meantime, what about poor Mr Tumner, said Lucy. The quickest way you can help him is by going to meet Aslan, said Mr Beaver. Once he's with us, then we can begin doing things. Not that we don't need you too, for there's another of those old rhymes. When Adam's flesh and Adam's bone sits at Ker Paravel in throne, the evil t time will be over and done. So things must be drawing to their end now. He's come and you've come. We've heard of Aslan coming into these parts before, long ago. and Nobody can say when, but there's never been any of your race here before. That's what I don't understand, Mr Beaver, said Peter. I mean, isn't the witch herself human? She'd like us to believe it, said Mr Beaver, and it's on that that she bases her claim to be queen. But she's no daughter of Eve. She comes from your father, Adam's. Here, Mr Beaver bowed. Your father's Adam's first wife. Her they call Lilith, and she was one of the djinn. That's what comes from on one side, and on the other side she comes of the giants. No, no, there isn't a drop of real human blood in the witch. That's why she's bad all through, Mr Beaver, said Mrs Beaver. True enough, Mrs Beaver, replied he. There may be two views about humans, uh, meaning no offence to the present company, but there are no two views about things that look like humans and aren't. I've known good dwarves, said Mrs Beaver. So voy. Now you come to speak of it, said her husband, but precious few, and they're the ones least like men. But in general, take my advice. When you meet anything that's going to be human and isn't yet, or used to be human once and isn't now, or ought to be human and isn't, you keep your eyes on it and feel for your hatchet. That's, uh, and that's why the witch is always on the lookout for any humans in Narnia. She's been watching for you this many a year. And if she knew there were four of you, she'd be more dangerous still. What's that to do with it? asked Peter. Because of another prophecy, said Mr Beaver. Down at Care Paravel, that's the castle on the sea coast, down at the mouth of this river, which ought to be the capital of the whole country, if it all were as it should be. Down at Care Paravel, there are four thrones. And it's a saying in Narnia, time out of mind that when two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve sit in those four thrones, then it'll be the end not only of the white witch's reign, but of her life. And that's why we had to be so cautious as we came along. For if she knew about you four, your lives wouldn't be worth a shake of my whiskers. All the children had been attending so hard to what Mr Beaver was telling them, that they had noticed nothing else for a long time. Then, during a moment of silence that followed this last remark, Lucy suddenly said, I say, where's Edmund? There was a dreadful pause, and then everyone began asking, well, Who saw him last? How long has he been missing? Is he outside? And then all rushed to the door and looked out. The snow was falling thickly and steadily, the green ice of the pool had vanished under a thick white blanket, and from where, from where the little house stood in the centre of the dam, you could hardly see either bank. Out they went, plunging well over their ankles into soft, new snow, and went around the house in every direction. Edmund! Edmund! they called till they were hoarse. But the silently falling snow seemed to muffle their voices, and there was not even an echo in answer. Oh, how perfectly dreadful, said Susan, as at last they came back in despair. Oh, how I wish we'd never come. What on earth are we to do, said Peter. Do, said Mr Beaver, who was already putting on his snow boots. Do, we must be off at once. We haven't a moment to spare. We'd better divide into four search parties, said Peter, and, and go in different directions. Whoever finds him back must come here and... Search parties, son of Adam, said Mr Beaver. What for? What, why, to look for Edmund, of course. Well, there's no point in looking for him, said Mr Beaver. What, what do you mean, said Susan? He can't be far away yet, and we've got to find him. What do you mean when you say there's no use looking for him? 
The reason there's no use looking, said Mr Beaver, is that we already know where he's gone. Everyone stared in amazement. Don't you understand, said Mr Beaver. He's gone to her, to the White Witch. He's betrayed us all. Oh, sh oh surely. Oh, oh, really, said Susan. He can't have done that. Can't he? said Mr Beaver, looking very hard at the three children. And everything they wanted to say died on their lips, for each felt suddenly quite certain inside that this was exactly what Edmund had done. But will he know the way, said Peter. Has he been in this country before, asked Mr Beaver. Has he ever been here alone? Yes, said Lucy, almost in a whisper. I'm afraid he has. And did he tell you what he'd done or who he'd met? Well, no, he didn't, said Lucy. Then mark my words, said Mr Beaver. He's already met the White Witch and joined her aside and been told where she lives. I didn't like to mention it before, he being your brother and all, but the moment I set eyes on that brother of yours, I said to myself, treacherous. He had the look of one who'd been with the witch and eaten her food. You can always tell them if you've lived long in Narnia. Something in the, about their eyes. All the same, said Peter, in a rather choking sort of voice. We've still got to go and look for him. He's our brother after all, even if he is a, rather a little beast. And he's only a kid. Go to the White Witch's house, said Mrs Beaver. Don't you see the only chance of saving either him or yourselves is to keep away from her? How do you mean, said Lucy? Why, all she wants is to get all four of you. She's thinking all the time about those four thrones at Care Paravel. Once you were all four inside her house, her job would be done, and there'd be four new statues in her collection before you had time to speak. But she'll keep him alive as long as he's the only one she's got because she'll want to use him as a decoy, as a bait to catch the rest of you. Oh, can no one help? wailed Lucy. Only Aslan, said Mr Beaver. We must go on and meet him. That's our only chance now. It seems to me, dears, said Mrs Beaver, that's very important to know just when he slipped away. How much he can tell her depends on how much he heard. For instance, had we started talking of Aslan before he left? If not, then we may do very well, for she won't know that Aslan has come to Narnia, or that we're going to meet him, and, that, and she'll be quite off her guard as far as that's concerned. I don't remember his being here when we talked about Aslan, began Peter. But Lucy interrupted him. Oh, yeah, he was, she said miserably. Don't you remember? It was he who asked whether the witch could turn Aslan into stone too. So he did, by Jove, said Peter. Just the sort of, sort of thing he would say too. Worse and worse, said Mrs Beaver. And the next thing is this. Was he still here when we were told that the place for meeting Aslan was at the stone table? And of course no one knew the answer to this. Because if he was said Mr Beaver, then she'll simply sledge down in that direction and get between us and the stone table and catch us on our way down. In fact, we shall be cut off from Aslan. But that isn't what she'll do first, said Mrs Beaver. Not if I know her. The moment that Edmund tells her that we're here, she'll set out to catch us this very night. And if he's gone about half an hour, she'll be here in about another 20 minutes. You're right, Mrs Beaver, said her husband. We must all get away from here. There's not a moment to lose. <laughs>